Howdy and welcome back to Leafy Greens vs Zombies. Today we arrive at the Wild West, but this town ain't big enough for all my plants, so we're bringing just my Leafy Green plants today. If you're not sure what this challenge is all about, I invite you to take a look at the first episode linked in the top right of the screen. If you haven't got time to waste, however, I'll give you a quick rundown right now except in American accent rather than this western talk. I'm only allowed to use leafy green plants. No power-ups, level-ups, buying plant food, or using the Zen Garden. Skipping levels where all or some of my plants are pre-picked is allowed, including conveyor belt levels. I'm not allowed to interact with pre-planted plants. I get to place one sunflower on produce X sun levels. And lastly, I can modify rules mid-challenge. Before we get going, just a quick reminder that your feedback and support is very helpful, and I read every comment. Be sure to give your two cents. Also, there are now more ways to support me. If you're interested, stay around until the end of the video. Now let's ride. Day one was a breeze, and it introduces us to minecarts, which are going to be an incredibly strong and sometimes necessary utility in this world. Day two introduces us to the prospector zombie, who's almost never a problem for us because of our necessary use of bong choy. Not to mention, two of our four plants extinguish his dynamite, which means some of the time, he's the equivalent of a brown coat. Day two was fairly easy, so we can move on to day three. Day three is the arrival of the pianist zombie. Generally, while we have a good setup going, he isn't too big of a problem. It is dangerous because our bonk choice can have issues taking him out before they get rolled over, but an iceberg lettuce can usually take care of that. The biggest problem, however, is when he makes zombies switch into a lane without a lawnmower. No troubles with that yet, but it will become a concern in the future. Day four is up next, and we will mostly skip it since it's a not okay corral level, which means it's a conveyor level which means no leafy greens, and then we can go to day 5. Day 5 we get to meet the poncho zombie, the zombie with a 50-50 chance of being tougher than a bucket head or being almost the same as a brown coat. This is actually very annoying because using bong choys means we often cannot tell if they are strong enough to worry about or not until it's too late. Fortunately a cabbage pole plant food will reveal all poncho zombies on the screen, but even then the metal grate poses a big threat because even two bong choys and an iceberg lettuce have trouble taking him out. Fortunately, day 5 gave us very little trouble and we can move on to day six. Day six was very difficult due to the fact that it was a last stand level. Poncho and pianist zombies are all about and their combination makes them very deadly. The ponchos clear lawnmowers and the pianists send zombies into those lanes with great haste. Our third attempt was some sort of miracle that luckily kept all the zombies in lawnmower lanes. And when three lawnmowers went off almost simultaneously, it cleared the field of all our problems and the level was over with zero lawnmowers remaining. Day seven is a pretty basic level. No new zombies, just a lot of brute force, pressure, and swarming. We clear the level with only a couple plants eaten and acquire a poster that says our brains are wanted. This of course means that we will have a conveyor belt level coming up with no lawnmowers. I went ahead and beat day 8 with only pea shooters, as per usual, and we move on to day 9. Day 9 pre-picks all of our plants. I thought beating it with just chili bean would be fun, but I was unsuccessful. So I tried again with just pea shooters and it was easy peasy. Day 10 introduces one of the trickiest zombies of this world. The chicken wrangler zombie is a swarming zombie. And that's rough because even though all my plants have some splash capability, usually with plant food, there aren't any abilities that I have without plant food that can damage multiple zombies at once. Fortunately, a bonk choy can handle a single chicken wrangler's chickens in its lane on its own. However, if there are other zombies or multiple chicken wranglers that let their chickens loose at once, it's a whole other story. Another tactic we have is to freeze the chicken wranglers. For some reason, wranglers do not summon chickens upon getting hit if they are frozen. So if we can kill them in that time, they are no tougher than a brown coat. That's easier said than done, however. Chicken wranglers also release chicken upon touching a plant, so we have to plant iceberg lettuce perfectly if we want to use this strategy, as well as we must be able to kill the wrangler if we freeze it. This is difficult since our main damage dealer is melee. After a few attempts, we beat day 10 with all of our lawnmowers intact. Day 11 restricts us to spending 500 sun at the maximum. I took this even more seriously and did it with just 150. I spent 150 sun on a single bonk choy and beat the level with all lawnmowers remaining. Now, I did also plant iceberg lettuces, but you must admit, it's still a pretty impressive feat. Day 12 is another not okay corral, so we are pretty much skipping it. Day 13 was a little rough, but overall not a roadblock. It's also our introduction to the bull rider zombie. 
The Bull Rider has a massive hitbox, which means Bong Choy can hit it far before it can hit Bong Choy. We completed day 13 on our first run, all on Mars in the bank, and a perfectly symmetrical defense. Day 14 was a similar difficulty. I released a crazy barrage of cabbages at the end of the level to take care of a wave of almost pure wranglers, and we lost our middle lawnmower to one of the chicken wranglers, but nothing else too much interesting. Day 15 says we can't lose more than two plants, which basically means we can't use iceberg lettuce or hurricane. This is hardly a problem though, because the only zombies we have to deal with are brown coats, coneheads, and pianists. We pass the level first try and don't lose any lawnmowers. Now for the first very difficult level of this world. Day 16 is a protect the endangered plant level. These usually aren't too big of a problem for me, but this one in particular wasn't so easy. These protect the walnut levels are assuming you can use plant food on the walnut, but according to my challenge rules, the walnut is a pre-planted plant, and rule number four says that I cannot interact with it. You could argue that I'm interacting with it by moving it around on the minecart, but this level alone cost me more than 30 minutes by itself, and it's not even the hardest of these levels in this world. Wait until you see day 24. So, with this in mind, I'm allowing myself to move the minecart, but I still can't plant food the walnut, which means every single bite counts. Anyways, day 16 starts off with a lot of zombies, probably because it's under the assumption you are going to use the walnut to stall zombies a little bit. This isn't an option for me, of course, because I have to keep the health on the walnut up as much as I can. So, it's easy to fall behind in the beginning of the level, which makes the rest of the level hard as well. After a few tries, some good nut placement clears the level. Time for day 17. Day 17 is a flower line level. It gives us hardly any problems. Poncho zombies are a little tough as usual, and bull riders are annoying, but a few plant foods makes quick work of all of them, and we can start day 18. Day 18 is another last stand level, and this one was much harder than the earlier one. This one has chicken wranglers, which is very rough since I don't have any splash damage plants, and without the ability to restock my plants, use iceberg lettuces for the wranglers, and get a steady supply of plant food for my bong choys, it's very difficult to fend off the swarms of chickens, delayed by prospector zombies getting into my back lines and eating my cabbage bolts. This level was giving me so much trouble, I thought I might need some extra help, so I unlocked the head butter lettuce cedium and gave it a shot. However, that didn't really help. Head butter lettuce has a slower attack speed than bong choy, which is the opposite of what we need to take care of all the chickens. So, back to bong choy. And, after about half an hour of suffering through non-stop chickenings, I finally scrape by with no lawnmowers to spare and hardly any sun to waste. Finally, we can get on with day 19. Day 19 is easily cleared with my new friend, head butter lettuce. It's obviously a much stronger plant than bong choy, so I will avoid using it outside of necessity. Day 20 is another not okay corral level, so we will skip to day 21. Day 21 is a sun limit and flower line level. The zombie variety is limited, however, so it's fairly easy to pass with just bong choys and cabbage bolts. Day 22 is a pre-picked plants level, and although we have access to one of our plants, I don't think that iceberg lettuce is going to cut it for beating this level. I did, however, beat the level with only pea shooters after two attempts. On to day 23. Day 23 was pretty easy, except that my short-term memory made me almost instantly fail my first attempt. I forgot that I couldn't lose more than two plants, and when that third iceberg lettuce imploded on a zombie, I had to restart. But I cleared the level easy on my second attempt. Now for day 24. Day 24 is by far the hardest level of this challenge so far. This level was so painful. Unable to touch the nuts Dave had out right in front meant every bite was detrimental. And this level has chicken wranglers. I had to juggle all of Dave's nuts around on the front of my lawn while I made sure the zombies pets didn't nibble too much at them. All this micromanaging and Dave's nuts were swallowed not one, not two, but six times. Six times may not sound so bad, but handling a man's nuts six times in a row here is difficult because I have so few options. The strategies are so limited. Even after three attempts of the level, I felt there were no other options but to work at it and increase my skill. Finally, by the half a hair on the chinniest chin of my chinny chin chin, we beat the level with Dave nuts barely intact. So much chewing had surely rendered them nearly in pieces. My relief at this level's completion was unmatched. Finally, this world is over. Now we are done with all the relevant levels in Wild West. But if you'd like to watch the Zomboss fight and slash or have some real talk with me, stick around. To start off, I'm having so much fun with this. I just keep growing in popularity and I can't believe how fantastic all my viewers are. You're also kind in the comment section and it really is a blast to read all of your comments and have human conversations with you all. Building on that, as I grow in popularity, 
the number of comments grow, and my ability to reply to everyone dwindles. But if you'd like to support me and keep our connection secure, become a channel member. Monthly pricing starts at just $2.99, and it comes with more benefits than just priority reply. You'll get access to my videos before they premiere live, and you also get some exclusive badges and eventually emoji to use in the comment section. In addition, there's multiple tiers that provide extra benefits on top of that. If you're not interested in a monthly fee, however, you can also use super thanks, chats, and stickers to support me and have yourself heard. Lastly, any time now, possibly by the time you're seeing this, I should have a merch store linked to my channel. Either way, you can check the description to check out the product. Definitely let me know your thoughts. I know it's pricey, but also give me suggestions on what you would like to see in the store. I understand that not everyone can drop a few dollars on a stranger on the internet, so no worries. You've supported me enough already. Sticking around for my videos is a fantastic way to support my channel. If you've made it all the way to the end, go ahead and drop a hashtag LVZ in the comments so I know you got this far and I'll give your comment a heart. Oh, and one more thing. It's likely that I won't be able to film my promise of one video a week. My standards for production have jumped greatly, and even though I had lots of time this week to make a video, I also spent a lot more time on this video and YouTube itself. I can promise this series will continue, but I'm not sure how quickly. I could potentially hire an editor, but this video alone took me a good six hours of editing. I still would like to do daily polls and occasional shorts, as these are far less time consuming, but like I said, full videos will probably be once every two weeks. Anyways, Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video for Frostbite Caves.